from Alameda, California, the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network presents Flying High Over the Zone with the Zigzag Man. I am back, and you are comfortably zoned with me, Ralph Tycho, in Alameda, California, right across the bay from San Francisco, in the northern part of what I consider to be the greatest state in the Union. What do I know? I'm a happy guy today, though, folks, because I have a guest who I was acquainted with anywhere from 28 to 35 years ago, literally. I did a a gig for the Topps Baseball Card Company, and one of my uh, assignments was to go to the minor leagues and obligate players contractually to contracts so when they reach the big leagues, we would um, we would um, get them on a, a baseball card and pay them big bucks. And I'd give out $5 checks and sign <laughs> contracts and meet a whole bunch of upcoming kids, but that wasn't the most fun of it. The most fun of it was to get to meet and go back and talk to year after year with the minor league instructors, coaches, managers, player development people, scouts, what have you. And my guest is one of those guys, a career minor league guy who did what I consider to be the most important job in baseball, work at a, at a level where new players coming in to organize baseball, college graduates, some kids from high school, would get an introduction to how the game is played, how they need to keep their demeanor, how they need to adjust to the game, and um, my guest was right in there. Orv Franchuk, how are you, sir? It's been a long time. I'm good, Ralph. I'm, I'm, I live here in Arizona. The sunshine is wonderful on a daily basis. It's starting to cool off a little bit. Uh, it's been in the 90s almost every day. <laughs> But uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm in. I'm in. Uh, I'm, I'm hopefully uh, going to be. Uh, I'm, I coach over at a junior college here at Gateway, and and uh, we're we're hoping that the that, that the temperatures kind of go down a little bit here in a little while, and it looks like it. And uh, they're starting to here, so we're we're all good. Now, when I met you, you were with Tom Kochman, was the manager, and you were the pitching coach, if I remember correctly, and. Um, was it pitching coach? There was a, another fellow oh. named Zimmerman. Oh my Long goodness! Zeke, yeah, Zeke Zimmerman uh, was the pitching coach, and I was the hitting coach. And just so that I don't forget, I need to mention to you that uh, Zeke Zimmerman and I are both together coaching at. Uh, we hooked up again, coaching at Gate. Uh, Zeke's retired, so am I. We're both uh, coaching at Gateway, helping coach at Gateway uh, Community College here in, in Arizona. Whoa, that's terrific, because the three of you were so nice to me every time. And there was another coach in the organization who was a good friend of mine back from New York, the late Howie Gershberg. I don't know if you got got to know him very well. Got to know Howie Um, really well. Uh, He's just a a great baseball man and and a very good person. A very good person. He, um, uh, geez, uh, I, I'm overwhelmed as we speak about his loss. He, yeah. he died very early. He w- went through some um, some cancer treatments. Uh, mm-hmm. He was working for a while. He was back. He took a leave of absence. Came back. And, yeah. uh, very, very, very sad. Before I forget, please say hello to Zeke for me. I will. I'll see him today. We have uh, practice uh, starting in about an hour. <laughs> oh, terrific! That that's uh, good. Good memories. Tom Kochman was the manager. Tom Kochman, um, one of the players he developed 
was his son, Casey mm-hmm. Cashman, first yep. baseman, set an American League fielding record, as a matter of fact. And yep. um, did you do you remember Casey as a kid? Very well, Casey. Uh, when, it, when we when I started in, in Boise with the Angels with Koch. Um, Casey, when school was out, they lived in Florida, so when school was out, we were in the Northwest League in Boise. Uh, Casey right. would, would would join us in Boise and ride ride the bus with us. Take he would he would hit in one of the groups. We put him in a hitting group, and he would be uh, he'd hit in one of the groups. Just a little guy he was probably only eleven or twelve at the time. No, he was like thir- yeah, twelve, thirteen years old. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, loved, yeah, and Koch had a brother as well, if I remember. Who coached yep. a little bit back then? Randy, yeah, Randy was his name. Randy, he was also, yes. He also played. He was also a, a member of the Boise Hawks. I'm not sure what year that was, but he played with the Hawks a little bit. Uh huh. I I have a Boise Hawk cap in my collection. As a matter of fact, um, wow. Were you there in the year when you guys came in and played Portland? Portland, uh, the Portland Rockies, or was that before your, after your time? Uh, I think it was after me. Okay. All right. Well, um, those were good years. Koch was reminded me of Tony Larusa. Did yeah? Did he Koch, have Koch, that way about him? Yeah, he did have that way about him. A very. Uh, between the lines, probably one of the best baseball people I've ever been around. Uh, just he he loved the game. He was like a baseball rat, uh, knowledgeable, um, kind of a militant, disciplinarian kind of uh, person. But he was he was really good at that level because that's what the kids needed coming out of college and coming out of high school programs that really some of them really needed that. And he was. He made he made he taught kids how to win. He re, he really taught kids how to win. And uh, I don't know if you know that. You know he he moved over after millions of years with the Angels. He uh, the Boston last, over with the Red, Red Sox. Yeah, the last four or five years, and doing well over there as well. At yeah. that level, um, he's an intense man. I think that's where Very. he reminds me of La Russa. Am I correct? You are exactly correct. Intense. Uh, want, likes to win, and and uh, but he, but he also you know the winning the way he the way he goes about his business really rubs off on the players, and sometimes some of the players weren't really liking the way he came at you. I mean, he was pretty he could get in your face, but it wasn't personal. It was he trying to make he was trying to make you better, but um, you know in the end he's got a lot of rings on he's got a lot of rings. I've got. I had. I yes. got two or three of them, and I was with him for five years in in in, in Boise. I think I got two. I think I got two or three uh, championship rings with him. So everywhere he went, he they, he won championships. That's just how he was. Very well. Prepared. Talk, let's talk about some of the players that came through there that you guys helped develop. Ah oh, man, you know that's been a long time time for me to. I can I can recall like. Uh, and the guy that works on ESPN, um, well, Fetters, uh, Mike Fetters, uh, I think he was, uh, I think he was after me. Uh, I don't know if he, did he go through Boise? I don't know if he went through Boise. I don't know if he went through Boise or Palm Springs. They, um, Mike Sweeney? Mike, Mike Sweeney? Uh, yes, yes, remember yeah. him very well. Um, Hey, Orf, tell me about your playing career and how you got signed and where you where you went to to high school, college. How did you get to be a pro player? I was I was a a, um, high school player and actually uh, born in Canada. So when I was discovered, um, I was playing in a uh, summer league up in Canada. It's called was called the Western. Canadian Baseball League. It was a four-team league, and it was made up of completely all American college players from USC, UCLA, a lot of the West Coast colleges. And I was a local Canadian kid that um, tried out and made it made the team. 
And uh, while I was on the team, uh, John Scalinis, I'm sure that name rings a bell, who is a it does. avid college yes, guy, he, he saw me and recommended me to uh, the head coach at Pepperdine. And uh, so I got, a, I got a full ride out of that to go to Pepperdine. So I went to Pepperdine. My senior year, uh, I had a real serious injury. I was supposed to sign with the Mets, tore my Achilles. Never did play professionally, but I got into coaching and, and scouting uh, real early and along with uh, my teaching uh, during the off season. So I did that for uh, till, till 1995, and then Open came along and offered me a full-time hitting job because the AAA club was in Edmonton at the time, and so that's where I was living, and uh, so it was a perfect fit for me, and I, and I did that, and and then from there... Uh, well, what year were you at Pepperdine? At Pepperdine, I started there in 64, so that's back a few years. Okay, yes it is. Uh, we're about about the same age. I'm both got glad to say and sorry to say. Got my, got my bachelor's degree there and then went on uh, pot for four years and went back and got my master's degree at Long Beach State. And then, uh, and then uh, from there I went back to Canada and did the... Coach, summer, coaching in the summer and in the short season, so that I could teach, uh, and then uh, did that until till '95 with the Angels, and until until '95, Open came to Edmonton with their AAA uh, uh, club, and they asked me to to uh, be the hitting guy. So, but I had to give up my teaching career. So at that time, they said we want you to come on, but you have to come on as a full time guy. So I did that. So I went to Oakland for eight, and then I went to the Red Sox. I uh, was the hitting coordinator there uh, for four years. Got a World Series ring in 04. They got the Curse of the Babe. It was kind of neat the way we, way we won that as a hitting right. coordinator. And then went, went to Houston for two, hitting coordinator. And then I went to the Padres. Then I went to uh, the Dodgers. Um, finished, uh, finished with the Dodgers in 13 was my last year. Had Puig and what was the Puig. Dodger organization like compared to, say, the Angels? Uh, the, you know, the organization, when I was coming up, the organization for me really uh, taught me a lot and, and really it was, to me, it was solid because they developed within, and that's kind of where, where it started with the Open A's with Billy Bean and Keith Lipman and Carl Keel and all those guys. Right. Um, but uh, as, as I got towards the end of my career, you know, a lot of the organizations started to follow that, that, that idea. And, uh, I mean, you know, the, the Dodgers were good. Um, yeah, I had, you know, like I said, I had Puig and Peterson and, and, uh, when I, in double A when I was the heading coach there. So, um, those two guys actually were pretty instrumental in the ball game last night, but not good. That must, yes, you must have, uh, did he lick his bat in those days? No, <laughs> no, he was a non, non licker. <laughs> He was a non-licker when I asked. A non-licker, right. Of, I think that's what, when they bring you here from Cuba, they ask you on, on the papers, are you a licker or are you a non-licker? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. You can't get on the boat if you're a non-licker. That's, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's funny. What um, did, you, did you play with Dale Campbell at Pepperdine? I did. I did. I know. I know Dale really well. Yeah, we're. we're can I can I give you a little coincidence how life works? Um, sure. I've been doing this podcast thing with Lenny Randall a, a lot, and uh -huh. we talked to Dale Campbell yesterday mm. about. And um, wow, that is, that really is a coincidence. Two guys from Pepperdine, same time. And Dale Hopkins. Does that name ring a bell? Hoppy? Yeah, oh, Hoppy. I, it, it does a little bit, but... Um, I played for the Sox for a little while. Yeah, he, he was at Pepperdine when I was there, yeah. Right. What is your biggest thrill in baseball? Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, I just... On a, I guess on a, if it was a single thing as for a single uh, event, it would have to be uh, being being a Boston Red Sox uh, and, and and being with the organization and and being a hitting coordinator and and being involved in 
being down three to nothing with the Yankees and then coming back and and for, beating them four straight and then and then going on and and winning the World Series and getting the World Series ring. But the part that that really is is special to me is. Is, is nobody really realizes and, no, and notices after we beat the Yankees, which was a big deal, we went, we ended up sweeping the Cardinals four straight right after that, and so it was that kind of that during that time I guess it would be a you know a six week period or a five week period that had to be the most exciting time in my baseball career, but I have so many uh, others that. Uh, you know, just 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 waking up every morning, opening my eyes, and can't wait. Not being able to wait to get to work because I love my job. I love I'm a baseball rat. I love being on the field, and I love working with young people. And and just uh, God, so many good relationships and so many people that I know in the game uh, that have had. Well, a- who greased the way for you? And and uh, conversely, who held you back? Wow, well, I mean, I, I guess you'd have to say that people like Clark Rex and John Scalinas and Gary Marks and uh, am I actually greasing the way? It started with my brother and living on the farm, and he was a big baseball uh, guy, player. And between you know working the fields and going to baseball practice, I would tag along and be bad boy. That to me, that was probably the biggest influence in, in my life starting my baseball uh, passion. And then uh, I'm halting it. I mean, you know, um, I I think it was a little bit to do with when as a coordinator, the travel. I mean, I loved my job, but the travel, it was just really, really uh, difficult for me towards the end. The travel part would, uh, was really a part that I, I didn't, I didn't enjoy. And I know that there's, that's, that's probably not the worst thing in the world, but uh, it kind of soured my taste to doing what I did professionally. And then the Eagles with the big league guys, you know, going to big league camp every year and spending time with big with the big league club every year uh, from time to time. Uh, some great, great, great guys and some guys that, you know, you know that I think I there's, you. There's you don't have to mention names, but, but, yeah, there are – there are those that you just wonder why they react in a certain way, why their attitude is a, is a certain way. Well, it just well, I think there's a lot of same in any profession, I'm sure. Yeah, there's a lot of lack of respect for the people that that help them to do what they do and make the money that they make, and 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 as a result, those people don't get. I don't. I feel like those people don't get the recognition that they deserve. And then, you know, the other thing for me, while well, just I'm kind of bouncing around, Ralph, but it's, it's, it's really not, I mean, the guys at the big league level, coaches at the big league level, there's, there's some coaches at the big league level that are making, barely making $100,000 a year. Well, after you pay your licensing every, and then your clubhouse dues every day and, and you know, do, playing, having a place to stay like that, there's, there's, there's guys that I know that, I, that I've been involved with that I have to take out a, a loan on a, on a yearly basis to make it through the season, to pay their mortgage and to help with their home situation. And I just think it would be nice if the owners just decided to say, you know what, B- B- big league coaches should at least get minimum big league salary. And, uh, and it, or off the players association, somebody like Jeter or somebody like that, that with, with, a, with, with that has some pop and say, Hey, we need to start treating our coaches at the big league level. Uh, with financially being able to handle, take care of them a little bit better because that's sure not happening right now. And again, it depends gotcha. on the organization. It depends on the organization that you're with. But like I say, I know over the years uh, I got some I got some stories that are that'll make your hair curl. Hey, come back and tell them, and bring Zeke with you. <laughs> I will. I will tell All right. them today that I. That I talked to Ralph. He'll be. A, Tell, he'll, be a, he'll he'll remember me. I was the annoying top guy. Okay. I'm still annoying. I'm not the top guy anymore, but I'm annoying. What are you doing so, nowadays? 
I've been doing podcast radio. I'm kind of retired, and I started this network that um, – How long have you, you been doing podcasting? About five years. Oh, and I've been doing it as a network uh, coming up on my second year. And we've got shows with people like Peter Golenbach, Lenny Randall, Mark Littell does a show uh, on this network, uh, David Nemec, the sport, the, the writer, Hal Bach does a show, George Case the uh, Third, Ronnie Rabinovich, Peter Trunk. We, we just have a, a gold mine full of older folks who remember the way things were and yeah. like, like to project uh, like to put it the way things were, and we put it in to today's game, and we try to find out uh, about the future a little bit. We try to keep up with with the game in the sense that we're we're trying to find people to talk to that are coming up as well as the old veterans. So it's tremendous fun for me, and. Um, it's a great way to play my way through life, as is my Well, good for you. Good for you. Well, listen, uh, Ralph, if you if you ever uh, have a, a, another little time frame where you're looking for somebody to talk to, uh, I'd be I'd be honored to to come back and talk to you again. Beautiful. Uh, I will definitely uh, hold you to that. And uh, all I ask is that when you come here and enjoy an interview, you just have fun with it, and you, you seem to. And the memories come easy for you. You're not bitter. You're not l- looking to blame people for this, that, and the other thing. Mm-hmm. And um, it, the game has been great for me. for me today, young man. Okay. All right. Uh, All right, we'll Ralph. going. And t- tell me the name of the, the junior college that you guys teach at yeah, uh, or coach at. Wait. Yeah, Gateway Community College in Arizona, in uh, Phoenix. In Phoenix. Beautiful. Yeah. Who's your number one guy? Who do you have? Uh, be more than one. We, we, uh, uh, Ralph, we, we brought 24 freshmen in this year, so uh, we're still trying to figure it out. We lost a whole bunch of guys last year, so uh, we're bringing them. We're kind of a, it's kind of a new, new uh, group of guys, so I don't know yet. It's pretty early. Good. That's Gateway Junior College, and it's in uh, Phoenix, and we will be following yeah. you on Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. Promise All right, Ralph. All right. Thanks, Orf. Be well. Good say night. hi to Zeke. All right. Take care. Thank you again. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Keep on keeping on. I'll be back. <laughs>